Let's get creative and grab yourself a spoon. Oh, there we go. Greetings all. Time to get a bit creative. Nice and simple with a spoon. Tablet, obviously, to get a reflection off, and then take <laughs> and then take some photos. Doesn't matter the size, big, little, medium. Just make sure it's not wooden. <laughs> okay. So, uh, set up. Here we go. There are a couple of things that I actually did and the reasons why. Um, now, I'll put the backdrop in for, um, because um, it's not really long exposure, so it, you, you really could do something in the background just to help it keep it a little bit dark, but um, you, you don't need to. I mean, I've, I've, I've done shots before where you just use long exposure to black the background off. Um, I did the Apple one um, up here. Um, but just for the sake of it, I actually put the backdrop in. Um, one of the things I found was because the um, the the, the, the well, my tablet is white around the edges, um, as you could see it in in the image, and I weren't too worried too much about the sides because uh, I could soon crop them out. Um, but the back of it, it it, it spoiled the shot, so I actually had to get another bit of uh, black cloth just to put over the back, um, just to get rid of the white strip on the back um, so it's one thing to look out for um it didn't spoil the shot because you couldn't see it. it's black black background so it, it blended you couldn't see it um settings um do you know what it's 
you could do this in manual um, if you if you really want to. Um, but you're quite close. So settings wise, it's 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 so forgiving um, on this one that you could probably just stick it in aperture priority and just you know you could probably even do it in full auto if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll just kept the ISO pretty low, um, uh, even though it's quite dark. But it just stops getting a. If your ISO is too high, you do get a bit of graininess, especially when it's black. Um, you get you get quite a bit of graininess. So I, I didn't really want that, so I kept it quite low. Uh, weren't too weren't bothered about the shutter speed. Um, you know, just self timer on the camera. Play, just let the camera settle and all the rest of it. Um, the usual things as well is you obviously want a tripod, turn your image stabilisation off because you don't really need it. Um, but other than that, settings wise, I wouldn't really worry too much. Um, I did a couple actually in um, um, Aperture Bright and a couple in Manual. Um, try to get the exposure down slightly so it's underexposed. But same again, if you're um, when you're going into your post software and stuff, um, you can soon drop the exposure, as I'll show in a bit anyway. You can soon drop the exposure down slightly just to get rid of because when you do this sort of thing you tend to get like flecks um of, of dust and stuff so you know you drop the exposure down it, it soon eliminates those when you're doing it in post anyway um i don't know if anything else that's used to say about that um but yeah it's um it's quite pretty <laughs> it's quite pretty um so yeah um let's just quickly go over the um uh, the um post process of what i did uh obviously the first thing i'm probably going to do is i think we'll crop the sides um i think that's there we go yeah it's about, about that um it's probably there we go yeah that looks good yeah that's pretty good um so that's obviously removed the sides of the tablet Obviously, I put the black cloth over the back to get rid of the white strip at the back. Um, one of the first things I always tend to do is I always tend to have a look at the presets that we've got because um, it's always a good starting point. Um, so, but being obviously this is black and white, I'm actually going to make sure it is in black and white. Um, it will just <clears throat> bring out the black and the white uh, and basically grayscaling. It'll, it'll bring it out a little bit better. All right, exposure. Uh, probably just going to drop it down a bit, maybe not too much, just a little bit. Um, this is a little bit of a yeah. There's a little bit of an awkward reflection just to the left of the spoon. Let's see if we can get rid of. So we get rid of that. That's not too bad. Um, right, things with like your, your highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. I tend to just play around with them. Um, just move the slider back and forth, back and forth. Um, just, yeah, it just sort of gives you, you know, zip it one way, zip it full of the other and then just adjust it around. Gives you an idea when you do that of what's being changed. So I'll just play around with a few of those. Uh, Clean haze and the clarity. Let's bring that. Yep. Yeah. That looks good. Looks good. Yeah. And one of the last things I always tend to do as well in the post is I always tend to go back to the exposure after um, I have finished the editing part. And and the reason being is because when you only tweak other things, you do have a tendency to sort of um, need to adjust the exposure again. Um, at the end when you're finished just my preference anyway right let's um a bit, bit more of an effect so let's just add a bit of um a vignetting on here um yeah not too much just a tad i think probably is going to be good on that one yeah that was good that's good right let's uh export that one bum, bum, bum. Okay, exported. Um, when I do these things, I do have a tendency as well um, to 
copy the settings that I've actually done, already pre-done. And, and the reason being is because when you're doing the same sort of processing on each, once you've done the, that on one and you pass it over to the others, it can save quite a lot of time, as you'll see that the rest of the editing now will take me seconds. So let's copy and paste onto this one. And there you go. It's pretty much already done. Um, probably just a few little tweaks. And to be fair, it looks okay as it is. Maybe just a slight adjustment of the exposure. Yeah, that's good. I like that. And save that one. And on to the last one, which is the more colourful one. But it's still the same again. Let's just paste the settings I'd already done. But obviously, because it's in black and white, I want to revert that back to colour. So there we go. Let's just pick a nice... Um, I think I'll probably go with probably a high contrast, high detail. Bring out them colours. And let's just expose you slightly. Highlights, yeah. And same again, a bit of vignetting maybe. Let's drop it down a bit more. There we go, and we'll save that one. That's done. Oh, so there we are. Uh, I'll, reasons I've saved the um, images that can be right at the very end. Um, but yeah, one of the things um, that's really good to actually get into uh, a habit of doing is um, when you load your images, obviously, into um, your photo editing software. Obviously, everyone knows I use Lightroom. Um, or Photoshop. The other things that I like about um, uh, Lightroom in particular is uh, I find it quite easy to use but when you spend quite a lot of time on one particular photo um, especially if you're doing um, like today where the, the photos are all of the same um, uh, type is that once you've you've gone through um, your, your settings you can copy your settings and paste them onto your next photo, it saves so much time because then it's only minor little tweaks that you've got to do. Um, quite a few of the times, um, especially what I've done like street photography, is I've edited one picture and I've just copied it across the whole the whole lot, minor adjustments. Um, obviously things like might need a, a bit of a colour tweak here and there and stuff like that, but it can you save so much time. Um, so if you, your, um, your photo editing suite is capable of doing that, do it. It saves a lot of time. It also gives you more time to spend on one particular photo, especially if you've got a load to do. So, because you, you can cut your workload down from a couple of hours down to probably half an hour, just literally by spending more time on one to get it right, copying it on the other with the minor tweaks. Um, I, and I mean, I picked that tip up from from um, from somebody else that just says, you know, don't waste too much time doing that because, you know, ninety nine percent of the time you. you, you you're pretty much going to be the same through your um, whole lot of images. So it's one thing I do. And also as well as things are presets. Um, presets are always a good starting point. So just hover down your presets. Find the one that is close to what you want to do. And that's when you make your adjustments. The reason that these things are in there are time saving. So if you can create your own presets, do it. It saves you so much time in the future when it comes to your post processing. So that's the tip of the day. Um, yes, you don't, um, also you don't have to use a spoon. You can use this with forks and you can get some pretty good results in that one. Um, knives and anything with a shiny surface like that that can basically just create a reflection. So uh, thanks for, for, for watching this uh, quick vid anyway. Well, it wasn't quick really, was it? <laughs> but thanks for watching the video guys. Hope you find it helpful. And um, I'll see you on our next adventure. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.